welcome everyone to Chess in the 21st Century. So if you're following, uh, the second part of the Grand Chess Store just ended in Belgium. So a lot of great games, even though it was Rapid and Blitz, I have to say it's amazing how many great end games were played in Blitz and in Rapid and so much end game knowledge and such good technique and, and so many attacking games, it was just amazing to see. So we're gonna start with this, so just a calculation puzzle. So block to move. So last move, white took a pawn. So Karana is playing Carlson. E5. Yeah. So take. So rook g4, uh, yeah, knight g1 looks like a strong idea, but I can just go rook a1 and take your knight. So just g5 and <coughs> g4 is unstoppable. So if you, uh, actually, let me see. Yeah. So this happened and um, white resigns because you only have one check. You cannot really capture anything. Even if you capture, I still have mate. So game over. Okay, so this was our warm up. So now we're gonna move on to. Um, so one of the most impressive games that was played was between Maxim Vachir, Lagrave, and Anand, and this was from round one. And this was um, Anand's first tournament in the Grand Chess Store this year. He didn't play in Paris, so he just started the tournament and he played a really beautiful and amazing game. Uh, I, I'm not going to run through the whole game, I just want to get to the position. Okay, maybe it's faster to do it this way. Something like this. Um, so it was a pretty double-edged position. Mm, so this knight on f5 kind of annoying because this knight cannot move, piece is going to come to e7, but at the same time the king side is a little compromised. So knight e4. So what would white do here? Right. So bishop h6, you cannot capture because of the fork. So Anand plays queen c7. Uh, so here knight took on g7. So what would happen if bishop takes? Yeah. Knight Yeah. So you remove the guard, you move your knight with a tempo, and now you're gonna... I'll take on g7 or take the queen and checkmate. So knight took. So we want to be able to use this f file. And also we want to be able to get the queen into the game. So what's stopping the queen uh, from getting into the game? This pawn, right? So if you're going to play knight f2, you need to, to calculate it out. So knight f2, king takes. So king out. Knight takes, king takes. Yeah, so you want to go knight h4. I understand I cannot take it. So um, I still want to go knight f5. So after the game, in the interview, Anand was just showing these lines like here and like he was going through all of them so fast and it's very impressive because this is a rapid game like we're moved 28 but why not they probably have like 10 minutes each and just like calculate everything out so fast so what happens after rook f3 so if you take on f3 you want to keep this king in this zone so the king cannot just run away so rook f3 king f3 what are your options so knight h4 so very forcing line. So king e3, and then. So let's try to do without moving. So rook f3, king f3, knight h4, king e3, only move, knight g2. Right, so I have to go to d2. So yeah. So let me show you. So and this is the line that he actually calculated. So knight h4. So here you have two options here. So either bishop a5 or you can go knight f4. So bishop a5. So now black has two moves. Ah, sorry, white has two moves. 
You either have to go to D1 or C1. Let's say I pick one of them. Let's say I go here. So actually, this is what he calculated. So 91. So what can white do? Queen B3 doesn't quite have a threat. So you have something far more active. Remember, D2 square is covered. Queen F5, and now all of a sudden black is the one getting mated. Queen E6 is just mates, but white still, uh, black still has a way of stopping it because the king is on C1. So it's, um, it's kind of a pattern. So it, it's going to involve your knight. So you want to cover the F file. So when I check you, you can block. So it's a tactical solution because I have a threat, right? Check and mate. To move mate. Queen F2. Queen F2. That's not Queen F2. Oh, that's Queen F2. And if you check now, I can just block. So this position is very tactical, but unfortunately for black, uh, after bishop a5, the king can simply go to d1. <coughs> and once you take, all the squares are blocked from the queen. And now black is the one getting made. So this is the reason why he rejected this line. So here it's also possible to go here. Of course, there is no king d1 because I will check and take your queen. Um, but okay, so this position is not so clear. We can just, uh, it's gonna go on. So it's not clear why uh, black is winning or why black is even better. So here you found a better move. So keep in mind, so the king is in a very bad square. So the king doesn't have a lot of places to go to. Basically, he's stuck. So we have this bishop. Um, we have this pin. Our rook is in the game. Your queen is hanging. Yeah. What's your move? Queen g3. Uh, so queen g2, let's say I go rook f1. And queen g2 was in fact played. Right, 95. Very beautiful move. So the key is to keep this king in the central uh, square. So we're using this pin, we're using this pin. So it takes, and even though there are two pieces for the rook, it turns out the king just doesn't have a safe square to go to. So for example, if you try something like this, Simply mate. If you try queen b3, same kind of mate. So just no squares to go to. So in this game, he actually uh, white played queen e2. So this should be simple. Yeah. And the king has to leave the queen alone. And it turns out, even though this looks very scary for black, there's really nothing because the rook alone cannot do anything. And these pieces are actually kind of awkward because the bishop cannot move, the knight is stuck, and the knight is, uh, looks like it's doing something, but in reality, it's not really covering any important squares. So the game went on for a few more moves. And of course, at a high level like this, uh, this kind of games don't go on for very long. So white resigned. So this 95 move, of course, he saw it. <coughs> and I remember during an interview when he was asked, did you see it? He was like, of course I saw it. <laughs> but um, former five-time world champion is not going to miss something like that. OK. So I have a few games. Uh, some of them I really want to go over the other ones. If we don't have the time, it's fine. Um, So same round, round one, Caruana is playing Topalov. So Topalov had really been struggling um, in Paris, which was the first half of the part of the tournament. And he actually, this whole year, he hasn't been doing really well. So Caruana also didn't do too well in Paris. His rapid and blitz skills are not the greatest. But I mean, he's still, of course, a very strong player. 
so let's see so same thing he sacrifices his rook so what's the point of the sacrifice right it's not a unlike the last position where black just sacrifices like a few more moves and white is just um, busted this is a um, very good practical decision, especially when you're playing low on time, because all the pressure is on your opponent to find defense. And for you, your moves are very natural. So in faster time control, this is very important. Even if maybe you're in a worse position, if you can find moves quickly when your clock is running and your opponent has to find something, of course, the pressure is on them. So white sacrifices a rook, but all these pawns are hanging and this king is in trouble. So actually white does have a threat. I just want to take this e5 pawn and this diagonal is uh, not safe so let's say if i make a random move just to pass the move and i actually have threats on the diagonal your rook is hanging if you take i'm gonna take the rook and you lost a lot of material uh so black didn't react well which is norm of course natural when all of a sudden the sacrifice comes at you and you have so many options and your opponent is not really doing something very forcing to win the game, it's very easy to make an error. So he actually played rook d7, this rook. So better move is um, something like this, covering the 7 rank. So just to go down the most forcing line, so <coughs> Now rook g8 is an option because we defend in this rook. So uh, white cannot just play down a rook forever. So white has to prove they sacrifice the rook for something. So if white tries to do this, now white has how many pawns? Four? No, three pawns, which is of course a lot. So getting this one. And now the position is not so clear because this king is quite exposed. So if you start pushing your pawns or you start getting very adventurous, I can always have a perpetual. And of course, I still have my extra knight, so white has to be a little precise. So rook here. So of course, so again, covering the seven rank and maybe trying to play a move like queen g8. So what to do? So this position is already very difficult to play for black. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to take a pawn. Uh, so if rook f6, it's going to be similar to the game. So king g8. So I really like uh, white's move here. So here you definitely don't want to... So here your opponent actually wants to take and then bring the knight into the game. So you definitely don't want to take because the knight's going to come into the game, just helping your opponent. Yeah, rook e6, very nice move. Because uh, what's the idea behind rook, rook e6? Yeah, so we have a dark square bishop, so our bishop is covering the dark square, so we're going to need our queen on the light squares. So you have a threat of playing rook e8. So if your opponent takes, the key is now he cannot block because of this pin. So king f8, I really like white's next move too. Bishop g5, very good. Bringing the bishop from this side. Bishop g5. So queen here. So why did we put the bishop on g5? Bishop h6, rook g7. So before you do anything in this position, one important question you want to ask yourself. Does black have a way of getting out of this? So black is really tied down. The rook cannot move. The king is stuck. Um, the queen doesn't have too many options because there's queen f6. So can black somehow, some way get out of this? Not really, right? Because if you play queen f7, I'm just going to check you. And you cannot block. So what does that mean for white? Does white have to rush with queen f6 or something forcing? No, so we can do something to improve our position. So what can we do? 
Yeah, either e5 or d4 and just start rolling these pawns. Because uh, if you're going to end up exchanging everything, you want your, your pawns to be more far advanced, so you can make threads with those pawns. So e5. Um, let me see if he played queen f7 already. No. So knight tries to get back into the game. So he keeps pushing. Queen f7. <coughs> so now black actually has a threat. Want to check and mate. So now you cannot just do whatever. Mm -hmm. Click on seat. So yeah, of course if I sorry. So of course if you block, yeah, one. Check. Yeah. So I have to get out. So white can white by force is already winning. So question: Can you? Wh what happens if you take on g seven? Right, so there is a perpetual threat, so we have to be very careful. So let me show you this. So if g3 perpetual, if back, well, if back you're getting mated. So g3 and you have to do a perpetual. So you don't want to do something like this and then get mated. All right, so so queen, uh, so queen b7 was played. So, so if queen c7, what if I go king? Where should I go? Queen. I have to go king e6, let's say. So your queen is on the wrong diagonal. So where does your queen need to be for this perpetual not to work? On b7? Right. It doesn't have to be on b7, it just has to be on this diagonal. So when those checks come at you, you can play g3 and then your queen will block. So. If bishop takes, I have a perpetual already. So first you need, you want to take now? If you take now... Okay, so what do you want to do? So first we have to put the queen on the diagonal. Yeah. Okay, so how are we going to do that? So you want your queen on this diagonal. So when your opponent starts checking, you can play g3 and then the queen will come and block. And then you're going to be up like three pawns. Okay, so queen b7, putting the queen on the diagonal. The king goes back, okay. If the king goes back, same thing, he went to the front and then. No, you don't want to take the queen because you're going to resign. So keep the queen on the diagonal with a tempo. Queen c6, so you're on the diagonal, king goes back, now you capture. Because if checks, that's it, game over. Um, so there, so takes, okay, so someone, so this is simple, so you can easily calculate out the win already. <coughs> right, because when you check me from the seventh rank, I have to go to f8 to protect the queen. So you can decide where you're checking me from. So queen b7, double attack, king here, and now you're just winning the piece. And you're up way too many pawns. So again, very good practical decision. So of course, maybe black could have defended better, but if you're playing this position and then you don't see a good way to improve, you think the game is um, maybe going to end up in a draw, you know, you put the pressure on your opponent, that let your opponent figure out if he can make a draw or if he's just going to collapse and lose like this. So all the pressure is on your opponent and that's the best situation to be in. So Wesley so had a really great tournament, but um, he finished second, played very solid, but this game was just a very bad game by him. So knight f2 here. Uh, so this part, I don't want to focus too much on this. I just want to get to the position I'm talking about. And h5. So this h5 move uh, happens a lot against this structure, even if black is behind in development. But here I think it just doesn't make any sense because black is way too behind in development. And 
there's no way all of a sudden white is just going to get under attack and get checkmated because the species are just not active enough, they're not really doing much. And <coughs> um, G6 yeah, I mean, that looks more natural to me. So um, I'm not sure why he decided to play like this. But <coughs> the advantage that black has, the center is still closed. So <coughs> okay. So white cannot just punish black for his bad king in the center. So white takes h4. Knight goes back. Because c6 was hanging. Let's say you go g6. I'm going to take. Nope. And you lost your rook. And this, actually, this Fianchetto's bishop is, of course, a very annoying piece. So rook c8. So now white decides to play very active, goes d4. So why d4? Yeah, so I'm asking why did uh, white decide to play d4? So if I take, what's your plan? So white doesn't have anything immediate. So what is white going to do? Yeah, so white is playing for initiative because black is still behind in development. This king is still in the center. So white wants to quickly uh, take out his pieces and um, do something in the center before um, black castles. So let's say you have to play g6, otherwise it's just not develop. So rook fd1 and queen here. Maybe you can harass the queen more and then put your bishop on the diagonal. So again, a long-term sacrifice. It's not like white is just crashing through. But black didn't take it, so black got a little scared. So bishop d5. And again, in the faster time controls, like ac accepting this kind of sacrifices are, is very scary. So in the long time control, you can sit here, think about for like 10, 15 minutes, figure out, okay, if I take this pawn, am I getting killed or am I okay? But then when your opponent plays, um, you know, 25 or like by now, you probably have less time, move like this, sacrificing a pawn, and you see all his pieces are coming out, it's not so easy to take a pawn like this. But instead what he did was uh, a lot crazier. So bishop d5, so e4, so takes, takes, queen d4. I mean, yeah, the way the black is playing is very reckless. So now actually the position has opened up even more. So you have two pieces, on, when you have two pieces under attack, like what's the general rule? What do you want to do? Yeah, you want to move one of them with a tempo or capture so you don't just lose a piece. So what do we want to do? Knight f7. Tempo move, attacking the rook, and black doesn't have time to capture this bishop because it doesn't make any threats. So takes. Bishop g6. So this king is just horrible. Queen b3, I'm most or likely going to block. So queen b3 is actually a very bad move yeah, because no, queen d5 and I'm threatening yeah, mate. Queen f5. Queen f5. You want to mate me, so I'll go queen d7, probably. Or queen d5 again. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, rook d1. So uh, the thing is this king is not really going anywhere, so... You have time to activate your pieces. So queen e5, bishop f4. So all your pieces are coming out with a tempo. So your attack is just going to be stronger because you developed all your pieces. And this king is not improving anytime soon. So here, and now, white has a very simple win. So you have these pieces on one diagonal. So you need <coughs> another one on this diagonal. So the queen doesn't really help you because a piece blocks you. So what's the other? Yeah, so you need to, to check with the bishop. Because if the queen checks, the knight will block. If a bishop checks, then this is, um, the king is stuck. So g5. Mm. 
-hmm. Bishop C8. So of course, he, uh, I think he heard, no, he didn't resign. But of course, he cannot take because you have mate. So he played king g7 and just his, you won a rook, nothing fancy, you just move your bishop and of course white won the game. So kind of a miniature, kind of um, not a good way to lose a game. Okay, so we don't have that much time left, so there was a game I really wanted to go over. Okay, let's look at it from white's point of view. So what's going on in this position? R rook endings are very hard to deal with. And there were a lot of rook endings and some of them were played great, some of them were misplayed and um, it happened because the rook endings are very tricky. But before we find moves or before we do anything, we need to understand what's going on in this position. Right? Yeah, so from the white's point of view, white has this uh, pretty advanced f pawn. Um, so it's, um, the idea is kind of the same. So block is eventually going to have to end up this rook, it's going to end up giving up this rook for the pawn and white is going to do the same. But the problem for white is what? It's because I still have two versus one. So if I can take this pawn and then give up my rook, there is no way your rook can sub two pawns. So it's very important for white not to lose this pawn. Okay, so what to do? Rookie so rookie one was played. So king here. And then if f3. It's, it's still two versus one. I mean, uh, and actually it kind of just helped me there too because f2 is gonna come with a tempo. So let me show you, for example, if you just um, push your pawn and I take, of course, if you push your pawn, you're just losing. If you try to be very clever, then I'm just gonna play here and you cannot stop two pawns. So what is white's defense? Rook g1. Rook g1. So you have to defend it. So it's very important not to give up this pawn. So if your opponent plays um, f3, you're happy because you're happy to give up this rook, it's a corner pawn, and your pawn is far advanced, you're just gonna start pushing it. So something like this doesn't scare you. I mean, okay, you can play here, and just such an easy draw, not even close. So after this, what if I play, I go after this guy. King b5, let's see here. So again, you cannot just allow me to come and take these guys. So you have to go after my own pawns. Rookie one, rookie four, and let's say, okay, if I take same draw, one versus one, so here, Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between these two positions? Right. Once you push, then you're going to have rook a4. So if your opponent also just cannot waste a lot of times because you have counterplay. So for example, after rook g1, what if I go king e3? Most straightforward move. So a6, king f2, you want to go rook a1. And I'll take. Maybe rookie one first. Uh, so rookie one was played. It was um, similar to what happened in the game. Rookie one, king f two. Ah. <laughs> then rookie four, 
Yeah, that's what happens in the game. So I'll come back and show it. But let's find a way. Um, so that doesn't work. So let's figure out a way how to defend. Or actually, let me show you why it didn't work, and then we'll find. Um. So in the game, he played rook d1, so we got to the same position. So this is the position you wanted, right? OK, so now king g3. So this is the key move. So a6, king b5, and how to stop the pawn. Right. If you go rook a2, I mean, OK, you can still play this. And then you can play this queen endgame. But no reason to make things complicated. So you can, um, oops. You can just play rook h2 and just simply give up your rook from the side. Um, yeah, yeah, this is exactly what happened. And black won the game. So let's go back to this position. So rook g1, we found the move. And then we said king e3. So now we have to find a way to still hang on to our pawn. But king b3, you're on the right path, because you need to get rid of this annoying rook that's attacking you. So king f2 is a threat, so we need to find a way to deal with it. So unfortunately, we don't have this trick, like this idea with rook e1, rook e4 that was tried. It didn't work, because this annoying rook is here constantly attacking this pawn, and we don't have time to push our own pawn. So king b3, let's say the rook goes somewhere. So rook f1 is a possibility, but I think after this move, I still have time to come and take it. So let's find another way to defend the pawn. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You got rid of the rook from the second rank. Now we're going to defend from this side. Something like this. And now I'm just going to start pushing my own pawn. So now you don't have a choice. You have to do this and make a draw. So very nice. So this game is always very instructive. And um, I thought this part was very interesting. First, you're defending the pawn from behind. Uh, sorry. And then <coughs> you switch up your ideas, and then you start defending the pawn from the side. But the most important thing to realize in this position, how important this pawn is. And you have to hang on to this pawn, otherwise you're going to lose the game. Because your own pawn is not fast enough to stop this rook from taking the pawn. <coughs> so I think this is all I have for today. We're out of time. But if you want to check out the games, I'm highly suggesting it's so many instructive end games, both in Paris and both in Belgium. Even in rapid and blitz time controls, there's such high quality games, some of them, not all of them. <laughs> some of them, for, like we said, the Wesley game is not a very good game. Very high quality games, even with the mistakes, you can learn so much from them.